Hey there guys, we've been talking about statistical process control on these run charts and we ran into the eight tests to see when a machine's out of control. And you might be asking yourself why we have these eight tests specifically. And the reason is the probability of these arrangement of dots happening that way is extremely low. A very rare chance that they're happening um, and, and we'll talk about how to actually calculate that probability. But we also ran into that idea of a false alarm. So what a false alarm is is that the machine meets one of those eight tests, but it isn't out of control. Uh, it's showing those characteristics, but it's just maybe doing what it should be, and maybe it goes back to normal afterwards. Now, why it happens is probably more important to understand, that the probability of these tests is extremely low. But if you run a machine long enough, you know, so many data, you know, so many data points, and you're just collecting a lot of data, the tests are probably going to happen. The machine should make data that falls underneath a normal curve. So if I have that normal curve, eventually I get a bunch of data points in this region, but then I might get one here. But to fill in that normal curve on the outside edges, it'll happen. So knowing those definition of what it is and why it happens is extremely important. Now I made up a test here to practice how to find the probability of these tests happening. It says find the probability of false alarm with six out of seven observations in a row in zone B or beyond on one half of the chart. So one situation that it could look like is I might have one, two, uh, let's say the third one isn't, four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, I guess it's seven, sorry about that. So I can connect all these and this would meet this test. So what I'll do is find the probability of a false alarm happening that maybe I meet this test and the machine's not out of control. So what I want to do is look at all the scenarios that I can get six out of seven in B or beyond. And the best way to probably do that is write it out. Now, one possibility I could have is all seven are in B or beyond. That one does count as six out of seven. So what we have to think about is the probability of being in zone B or beyond in one half of the chart. In this case, being in B and beyond is a 16% chance or probability of 0.16. Now, with multiplication rule, I can take two, three, four, five, six, seven of these to the seventh power. And that's the probability of just one option that would meet this. But since it's a false alarm of any combination happening, we keep going down here. For example, let's say the first one isn't in zone B, but then the rest are. Well, that's going to be the probability of not being in zone B is going to be 0.84. That's 100 minus 0.16. It's anywhere down here is 0.84. And it can be anywhere down there. We just say it's not in the top zone B. But then I have six of them that have that 0.16 probability. So I'm still multiplying these, these together. Well, if I keep going through that, notice the next one. Well, maybe the second one isn't. That's still, though, um, 0.84 times 0.16 to the sixth. Since that multiplication doesn't really matter the order, that's what I end up with. So you can keep writing out all these options, and it's probably the best to do with the letters, but then find some patterns. There's a third one, a fourth one, a fifth one, and a sixth one, and a you know, seventh one down way down here, that all of these have the same probability. I mean, do, 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 all have the same probability. Even this last one has 0 0.84, 0 0.16. So what I want to do is add all these probabilities up. It's each little um, option to meet this test. So what I would say is that I'm going to take this 0.16 to the 7th plus I have seven options that are all 0.84s times 0.16s to the 6th. Now, probably talked about this in class also. This statement right here is really, really important on one half of the chart. All I've really found with these ones, I was kind of assuming I'm dealing with the top half. Well, I can just have the same amount of options if I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the 7 without. So they can be on the bottom half. But that's really just doing these options again. So what I can do is take this whole thing and double it. Same probability on the top half as it is on the bottom half, but I'm adding all those up. So it's 2 times that probability. As you can see, I started to put that in my calculator, and it gave me this answer here. 2.026687 e to the negative fourth. So there's a very low probability, which it should be. But I go one, two, three, four. There's my decimal. 
One, two, fill in three zeros. If we're rounding to our two numbers, my final answer, the probability would be 0 0.0002. I would check to see if this third number would make this round up, but it doesn't, so maybe I'll put a two zero to show that I did check to round to two numbers. So there's a 0.02% chance of this test actually happening or showing a false alarm. But if I ran the machine enough for however long, you know, a couple of years, who knows, it might get this test, but then you just have to watch it afterwards to see if it goes back into in control. You're not going to have to determine if a test is out of control or if it's a false alarm. You just need to find the probability of it actually happening. So I hope this helps. You're going to find the probability of most of the eight tests that we've been dealing with. But I think when it's these out of options, I think we have a two out of three, we have a four out of five. You got to write out all those options, show all your work to see what the combinations might be. But then you add up all those combinations to find that probability. Hope this helps. Have a great day. Talk to you later.